Good morning, church family. Pastor Brett here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. You know, we are surrounded by potential danger all the time in our society, though we don't really think much about it. But if you dwell on it a little bit, consider how much 240 volt electricity is flying through your house in copper cords just sometimes centimetres away from you. Well insulated, of course, but potentially dangerous. Or cars that are passing you at 100 kilometres an hour in the opposite direction with nothing but a, a space of a couple of metres. You, you want to hope they aim straight, right? We cook in the kitchen with hot plates and boiling water and oil. We even intentionally flirt with danger in some sports, particularly the extreme ones like hang gliding and, and things like that. My point is that we're surrounded by danger, but we don't think much of it. We don't think of our ordinary day lives as a risk. And so we take it for granted. We become immune to the risks that potentially surround us all the time. I think we do this spiritually as well. There's a verse I'd like to read that most of you will know fairly well from the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. He says, Stay alert, watch out, for your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him, and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of sufferings you are. Satan is prowling around, looking for a victim. This is not some bedtime story designed to frighten us to stay in bed by mum and dad. This is God letting us know the true nature of the risk in the world. Satan is looking for an opportunity to destroy. And he uses a personal word here, looking for someone to devour. That's what he does. He destroys. And Satan will look for any opportunity he can to lead you astray from what God is leading you to do. Destroy your faith if he can. Destroy your life, if he can. Even distract you, if that's all he can do, so that you would miss opportunities that God gives you. Yet we become blissful of this danger. We are unaware of its ever-presence in our lives. We, for example, can flirt dangerously close to temptation, exposing our, our life, to things that we know would displease God, coming nice and close to the line for the thrill of it, all the while so close to danger. If we were more aware of this risk, prayer for many Christians would be more of a serious thing and not so much neglected. We allow so much in our lives that compete with God. Worst of all, some Christians even deny the activity of Satan in the world, choosing to ignore him as if he didn't exist. Peter leaves us with two instructions. The first is be alert. Now this instruction carries with it a, a sober mindedness. Be sensible about your life. Be alert. Have this in the back of your mind, that kind of thing. We should always assume that the devil is looking for an opportunity to trip us up. Where is the temptation likely to come in your life? It would do you good to be aware of those things. Be conscious of random negative thoughts that might pop up in your mind about God or about others. Stay pure minded. Train your mind to dwell on the thoughts of God, on scripture. Now, there are times in your life where you have to be particularly careful of Satan coming in to, to upset. Times of sickness are one. 
we often observe that our physical, spiritual and emotional condition are attached. So when we're sick, we feel low in spirits, but we can also feel not as close to God. Prayer becomes more of a labour perhaps, and maybe we don't feel like doing the disciplines that we're used to. In sickness, Satan can came, come in and accuse, uh, make all kinds of wrong uh, statements into our mind. We need to be aware. Another time in our lives that we might be more susceptible is busyness where we're so full of activity and so stressed in our life that we are just not taking the time to be conscious. And it's in those times that Satan can send messages into our mind and tempt us in those ways. Tragedy and loss, obviously, when we start to question God and wonder where he is. And that can be something that Satan can use against us as well. And surprisingly, success. It's amazing how oftentimes you might experience a real successful moment with God, either a special touch or a success in ministry, only to be visited by discouragement and depression soon after. We often talk about this with baptisms and successful uh, camps and, and things like that. To be aware of those attacks that seek to steal our joy. So what do we do? We stand firm, Peter said, and be strong in the faith. You know, there is a level of discipline that comes from being in the kingdom of God. You, you need to maintain a level of discipline when you're walking in the kingdom. It's just the way it is. And so you, if you're going to be strong in your faith, as Peter suggests, you need to know what builds your faith up. So I ask you, what, what builds your faith? What is it that makes you feel closer to God? What is it that makes you desire God more? Now for some, it's reading the Bible. And even if that doesn't do it for you, you still should because the truth is important to offset Satan's lies. For some, it's prayer, just retreating into a time of just you and God. For some, it's service, working for God, getting busy for him. And that draws you close. For others, it's worship. And the list would go on and on. I think it's important for you to understand what is it that strengthens your faith and to develop those habits without fail, regularly in your life that your faith might build. If you develop those habits, stay close to him, you will be less likely to be taken by surprise from the devil. Let me pray for you. Father, I'm aware that there are times when we are more susceptible in weakness and in confidence, in good times and in bad. And we ask, Lord, that you'll continue to work within us to give us both knowledge and experience of you so that we can hunger you, hunger for you, desire you more. Help us to be alert and sensitive to the difference between your coaching and Satan's lies and tricks. Strengthen your church today. And for all those listening, Lord, may they be alert and conscious of your presence with them and very aware, Lord, if Satan should try to trick. And so we pray, Lord, as we we respect the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, we want that in our life, that we might give you glory in our living. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, keep walking with God. Keep talking with him and being prepared to listen as you read the Bible and let him talk back. And If he does speak, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others and we'll see you soon.